Okay, so let's begin looking at this SATA 120 and see what kind of condition it's really in and why we have no compression. Well, both rocker arms work and they are free. Now, one of the most critical parts of a Sato disassembly is pulling these pins out that hold the rocker arms in place. And I've said it once and I'll say it, I've said it many times, you have to have a very, very precisely fitting screwdriver with a really big handle on it because in theory these should not be torqued at all. They should not have be tight at all, they should just be free. But in many times, either at the factory or through another rebuild, people really torque these things down. And if and that is a hardened piece of steel, that pin is hardened and it, it fractures very easily if you don't have a perfectly fitting uh, drive in there. And you can fracture it out and strip it and then you're really screwed because if you can't get that pin out, you cannot drop these valves or do anything else with this engine at all as far as working on the valves and cleaning the springs or anything like that. Okay, so here's a drive that I use. I've had it ground down a couple of times and flat to make sure that it's the right width that way and width this way. And it fits in here really nice. Okay, good. I just got lucky because that one wasn't tight. So we're good there. Let's try this one. Oh, okay, good. All right. First major hurdle overcome. Now the next most critical part when you're disassembling one of these Sato engines is make sure that all your fasteners are cleaned out, the heads are cleaned out, there's no debris or mud or grunge, grit in there. Make sure they're cleaned out so that you can deeply recess your tool, your hex key because you want it fully inserted as far as it'll go and this is one I've shaved down specifically to get in ones like this because it's at an angle it's not a straight in shot and these are ball ends and you don't ever want to try and crack free a, a fastener with a ball end because it's just going to twist that thing and round it off and not work at all so I've cut this one down so that it fits down in here and it gives me some room to work and I just fit it in there and flush it get it all the way in there and then just start to pull on it and if you feel that it starts to slip and twist stop don't go any further until you heat and oil this up and maybe even use a punch to give it a mechanical shock to free it up because if you strip this head out then you've got real problems so moving on here let's see here what's our next I know I've got these pins loose I'm not going to pull them out yet I just kind of wanted to make sure that I cleared that hurdle and in fact I already did go off camera and I loosened all four of these just to make sure that they were in good shape so I think our next one here is let's get this back plate screws off okay so all those screws are out So I should be able to just rotate my carb, rotate my carb out of the way and pull it off. Like I said, it's going to be, should be just two O-rings sealing this. So it should just pull straight out, although it's feeling kind of tight for some reason, and it shouldn't be. Um, I'm going to have to put a little oil in there. some oil on that. 
I'm not sure why that would be feeling tight like that. It should not be. Alright, well this say this uh intake manifold is really being a bitch. I've never ever felt one that I couldn't just pour right out. So what I'm having to do is just kind of sit here and kind of keep walking this out. It's gonna take a while, so I'm not gonna I'm gonna pass on that right now and just go to removing the rest of this stuff. Now here I'm gonna see if I can save this gasket. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to or not. Yeah, it broke. Can't spare that gasket. Alright, well, that's unfortunate. Let's go ahead and finish taking these. This should be already unthreaded. It should just be a matter of pushing this pin out. Now there's a little clip here. They have to make sure you get to so this clip here. It's kind of a spacer more than anything. And then here's our rock rod. And of course, then we've got another screw right here. And hopefully it doesn't give us any more problems either. And there's our push rod assembly and holder. Next thing to check is what's the integrity of this rubber like? Because you don't want to have to replace those unless you have to. In fact, I'm going to wait until I take the head off so I can get on there and just really twist it at the base. I can't get my fingers around there and pull that off. Rubber feels like it's fine, so we should be in good shape there. And these have already broken loose, so. See, now you're going to need the ball end because you can't get in there straight so you kind of need to get in there at an angle so you can quickly spin that out. Clearly, I think it's bearings. So I was just able to break this free here. Ugh. Once you get this rubber rotating, it'll come up. You just kind of have to pinch it and do that type of thing with it. If it's brittle, just doing this will break it and then you'll know you need to get new ones now these cam followers on the 120 up size are mushroomed out on the bottom so those won't come out from the top but let's put that aside let's... well the piston ring is free you can see this has got some pretty decent runtime on it. our teflon retainers are here and present so that's a good thing this ring is free, so why it had no compression? I don't know because our valves are moving, unless maybe just the valve lash was way off. That could have been the reason for no compression. Uh, I got a little T pin here. I use a T pin to kind of pull these little retainers out. want to lose those and in theory I should just be able to use a punch 
that's the right diameter just tap that pin out we'll go do that and I am going to drop these valves and now this should be a little bit easier to try and work with this get this intake manifold out but I don't understand why it's doesn't seem like it's moving at all. It doesn't want to rotate. It should rotate freely. So this should be circular, so it should rotate freely. And why it's not is a concern. It almost makes me think that maybe this thing is not circular and it's damaged. I'm not sure. I don't have to get that out. I sure would like to so I can inspect those O-rings. Okay, I'm going to mess with that at another time. Let's uh, go down here and take our cam cover off. Okay, that's not the right size, I don't think. So again, make sure I get full engagement. Full engagement, break free. Good shape there. <clears throat> there we go. Another one of these gaskets I'd like to try to preserve if possible. Just gotta kind of try and find the edges and peel them up real gently. And that one is intact and can be reused. Now there's a small pin, or set screw, not a pin, I'm sorry, set screw that you got to loosen here. You don't have to pull it all the way out, just run it up until you can see it and it's then out of the groove cut in there to hold that in place. So now the same thing, I can go get a punch and drive that out. And get our cam followers and this timing gear out and the next order of business for this would be get my bearing puller on this thing and pull that off This one's ideal because it's got nice big grooves here that this puller can grip into and I've done several videos using this thing in the past and how I had to modify these teeth or the grippers here so that it would fit properly. But needless to say I've got that on there and this may not just pull right off it may be one of these things where I just have to put a lot of tension on it and then go heat it up. Or in some cases it just explosively comes off just like that and you don't need to heat it even if it doesn't come off like that when you go to you will put tension on it leave it there and then put oil and heat on it it's still gonna snap so that's always kind of a, a fun thing to do just be prepared because that's a friction fit mechanical friction fit and it's it's tight sometimes and it will come off explosively like that. So now I can go and get this crankshaft out, take these out to the garage and do my punching that I need to do to finish uh, disassembling these parts.